The pros and cons of sequential gearboxes. A sequential gearbox is a type of transmission that's used for motorbikes and high-performance road and track vehicles like the Elemental RP1, BAC Mono and Caterham 620R, plus most serious race cars. They allow for lightning-fast shifts and don't require the use of a clutch once you get going, meaning they're the ultimate companion for high-speed driving and wicked lap times. How does it work? Before we get into the pros and cons of the race-derived transmission, let's take a brief look at how it works. The process begins like any other gearbox. Power goes from the engine through a clutch and then through the chosen gear which transmits power to the differential. How a sequential differs from a traditional manual gearbox is how each gear is selected. Unlike a manual gearbox, a sequential features a specialized selector shaft, shift fork and gear selector. The selector shaft has multiple grooves around its circumference that selector pins in the gear selector fork follow to change gear ratios. To change gear, either by means of steering wheel mounted paddle shifters or by means of a gear lever, the driver moves the paddle or lever forward or backward. This movement, controlled by pneumatic or hydraulic actuators, turns a gear at the end of the selector shaft, which rotates the selector shaft. This rotation then moves the gear selector fork either left or right, thanks to the grooves in the selector shaft that a selector pin is forced to follow. This movement then meshes the fork with the desired gear on on the output shaft. To change up a gear, the driver pulls back on the paddle in this example, which rotates the selector shaft again. This disconnects the original selector fork and pushes it into a neutral position, after which another selector fork is used to engage a gear based on the grooves of the selector shaft. Now that we know more about the inner workings of a sequential gearbox, let's take a look at their pros and cons. Pros. Because sequential gearboxes use a selector shaft, the need for a clutch is eliminated except when selecting first gear. This means that a sequential gearbox can change up or down far quicker than a traditional manual H-gate gearbox, which not only simplifies the gear change process, it also saves precious time on a racetrack. Another benefit is that the nature of a sequential gearbox doesn't allow you to jump gears, for example from 5th to 3rd. The advantage here is that a sequential reduces the risk of gear change error that can occur in a car with a traditional manual gearbox. This greatly reduces the risk of lockups from poor gear selection and will eliminate the risk of engine failure from unexpected over revving. Sequential gearboxes that are controlled by steering wheel mounted paddles also allow the driver to keep both hands on the wheel while changing gear versus the traditional manual gearbox. Even selecting gears sequentially with a gear lever takes a fraction of the time needed by a traditional manual, meaning more hand time on the steering wheel which is always a good thing especially on the racetrack. Cons. Sequential gearboxes are expensive, and I mean really expensive. To give you an example, a new 6-speed Quaife sequential for the NA and NB MX-5 Miata that can handle up to 375 horsepower will set you back around £9,000 or $11,500. Yeah, you could buy 5 really nice NAs for that cash. Most sequential gearboxes feature straight-cut gears instead of helical cut gears, the former of which reduces friction to allow for fewer power losses. The negative here is that straight cut gears are louder and produce that high pitched whine that many drivers will find unbearable. Sequential gearboxes are also clunky at low speeds, which makes town driving a pain in the ass. On the flip side, if you're driving a car with a sequential in town, then you're not driving it right. Another downside for some people is the fact that sequential gearboxes do not allow direct access to certain gears, say from 4th to 2nd. Instead, you have to go up or down the gearbox in order without skipping. Again, the advantage here is that it's impossible to accidentally select the wrong gear, which could lead to lockups or massive over revving. And finally, it could be argued that the sequential gearbox doesn't offer as rewarding or fun a driving experience as a traditional H pattern manual, where perfect shift take concentration, great footwork, and a firm hand to slot each gear into its correct position. Whichever side of the fence you sit on, you can't argue with the fact that sequential gearboxes are awesome. They offer lightning fast shifts, are the only gearbox of choice for race cars, and are very satisfying to use at high speed. 
Have you ever wondered how we create car throttle videos? We've taken you behind the scenes on the Ferrari 488 shoot, but most of the hard work also happens in the editing suite. Now, thanks to Skillshare, you can learn how to edit YouTube films like the pros. Using Skillshare's animation classes, we set Ethan the task of animating the famous Ferrari prancing horse. Here, he's going through one of the tutorials, then getting busy with After Effects, and voila! The final result. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 15,000 classes in photography, design, animation, and more. While premium membership usually costs $10 a month, we're offering an exclusive two-month free trial for the first 500 Car Throttle fans who click the link in the description. Honda F20C and F22C 240 bhp from a 2-litre naturally aspirated engine is an impressive enough feat from the F20C before you consider the legendary variable valve timing. 